Hello and welcome back. Um, we're going to take a look at the Freedom Jam hardware uh, in a little bit more detail so you get an idea of what you're getting. Um, and I wanted to take you through the uh, kind of Freedom Jam uh, project page um, just to kind of see what's there. So here we have the Freedom Jam project page. Um, there's Sheldon playing his guitar. Um, cool little monkey. Um, and this is uh, a picture of uh, one of the prototypes. So uh, you can see here on the top layer, we have uh, three potentiometers. These are wired up to uh, three of the A to D converter inputs. So we have some knobs to kind of play with to control like tone or volume or whatnot. Um, there's two quarter inch jacks, um, you know, on the board. Now these are actually a uh, tip ring sleeve. Um, the quarter inch jacks, uh, the input jack is actually used to switch power from an external power source. So if you have a nine volt battery, the uh, ground lead gets attached uh, through uh, on the tip ring sleeved in a configuration such that the board's only powered when you plug in. Um, we'll take a look at that. That's nice for saving battery. Uh, then the other kind of feature we have is that I have three sets of pads that we can wire up either LEDs or switches. These are just attached to port pins, so you can either wire up a switch uh, or an LED maybe to do something cool, like switch on uh, extra overdrive or, or something like that. Um, all right, so on the board, uh, or I'm sorry, on the page here, I have links to the design files. Um, now what you get here is pretty much everything. Um, the first thing I, I want to show you is the complete design package. This, this is everything. This has uh, my raw design files for the board. It also has PDF files of the schematics. It has a bill of materials to show you all the parts that are on the board. So you can order from DigiKey, um, you know, and whatnot. Now, I also just kind of uploaded, if you want to look real quick, the uh, schematics uh, for the Freedom Jam. Um, and lastly, uh, the circuit boards, because this is open source, you can order uh, the circuit boards yourself uh, from your, your vendor of your choosing. Now, the, the lowest cost place um, that I found that's high quality is uh, Oshpark. So in my day job, we use, uh, you know, some uh, big vendors that are more expensive for doing like big designs. But uh, Oshpark's kind of neat. It has a very simple uh, interface and they tile up everyone's designs and sends them out. Uh, almost on a daily basis now, and I've uploaded uh, uh, a zip file that you can send directly to Oshpark. Everything's ready to go to order the boards. Now, as of today, we are at Rev Gamma, so I name my versions after the Greek letters Alpha, Beta, and Gamma. Um, Revs Alpha and Beta are ones that I built for playing around. Gamma is the first, you know, official version. Um, so, and let's just go to uh, Oshpark really quick. Uh, it's kind of a neat. All you do is you say get started now, select a file from your computer, uh, you upload the zip file, it, you know, and then you're done. So uh, you can step through here on your own. Now, if you didn't know about Oshpark, uh, now you do. It, it, it's great. They charge $5 a square inch and you get three copies of your design. Um, so this board, I believe, is about 30 bucks and you'll get three copies. So now in the future, uh, if there's enough interest, um, I'm going to start a Kickstarter uh, to get a bunch made to sell at a much lower cost. So, because I know if I went and uh, got a bunch myself, I could get it down to like three or four dollars uh, to uh, get it out the door. Um, uh, and later on, if there's enough interest as well, we'll get the boards uh, already assembled as well. But I really want you to assemble the boards yourself. It's it's really fun, uh, you know, kind of as a as a project uh, and to help kind of develop your skills. So. So what I'm going to do is grab the complete design package here. All right, let me switch to my desktop here. Um, so I here have the Freedom Jam folder. Let's take a look. All right, so um, in the root folder here, uh, I have my raw design files. Now, I do all my work in uh, Altium Designer. Um, so if you have a copy um, of Altium Designer, maybe at your university or whatnot, you can use that. But you don't need it. Um, but what I want to sh really point you out to is the build package. So in the build package, there are uh, three folders, one called CCA for Circuit Card Assembly, 
on PCB, um, and then schematics. So the schematics just have a PDF version uh, of the schematics. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Um, the PCB, uh, that just has the raw Gerber files. So if you want to go with someone else other than Oshpark, you can use these Gerber files. Oshpark, uh, I have to change a couple of the extensions because I believe the outline has to have a GKO extension and the and then the um, uh, drill file has to have a .xln. I did put in a, there's a layer list uh, text file here so you can kind of see what the layers are. All right, so there's the Gerbers. Uh, now in the CCA folder, this has stuff to, uh, to actually build the circuit card. CCA is a uh, a common name in uh, you know the electronics world for circuit card assembly. Uh, so we can open up uh, the bill of materials. All right, let's open up Excel. All right, let it in. So. I kind of made a nice assembly sheet here. So this has all the parts you're going to need. Uh, most come from DigiKey. Uh, some of the parts you may be able to find at other places. So um, the audio jacks, uh, I believe Newark, um, I had it listed. But you can also find them at Mauser. Um, the potentiometers are cheapest at Mauser, but you may find a compatible potentiometer. There's nothing on the big of a deal. Um, the A to D converters, um, I listed them as Mauser because at the time when I went to go design, uh, Mauser had stock, DigiKey did not. But you might want to look around. Uh, but there's not a ton of stuff on the board of line items. A lot of uh, little capacitors for filtering and whatnot. Um, the other kind of components that there's, you may be able to find a connector manufacturer sample are the header pins. Uh, for example, that, oh, I'm sorry, the header pins that go uh, between the top board, um, between the Freedom Jam board and the uh, Freedom K20D60. So uh, there's a bill of materials uh, you can use to get the uh, your boards built. I don't want to save that. Uh, the other thing, not that you're going to do automated assembly, I have a pick place file with uh, uh, coordinates. Maybe you do. Maybe you have your own. Maybe you built your own little pick and place machine. Um, then I like to also give, this is more for when I hand build something, some assembly prints. This is just a blown up, uh, you know, version of the board. So um, you can see, you know, the different layers, uh, you know, the top and bottom side with uh, the silk screen, because it may be hard to read, you know, the legend. Um, now, one thing I want to point out, I do name the pots um, in the code as alpha, beta, gamma, um, uh, you know, and then Delta Epsilon, um, you know, Zeta for the uh, uh, switches. So I, I like to use Greek letters, um, you know, for input. So uh, so there we go. We have a little assembly print. So there's everything you kind of need here to build the design. Uh, so next, let's open up the design. Uh, now I'm going to look at the schematics in Altium Designer because it's a little bit easier for me to pan around, but it's the same thing you're going to see uh uh, if you open up the PDF. All right, so we have the schematic here. Um, so I'm just going to step you through it fairly quickly here, just so you can so see the big stuff um, and kind of get an idea what's there. Um, so at the top, I have the the K20D interface. So I have the, 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 the four headers here, and I believe I use the same uh, designator that's on the K20 board as well. And all I really do here is I have net labels attached to pins. Now, what a net label means is that if you see a label, and I'll say, for example, PTC5, um, and you notice this wire looks like it doesn't go anywhere, but a net label uh, essentially logically connects it. So anywhere else that has that net label, so for example, right here, PTC5, they are logically connected. There really is a wire. It just makes the schematic a little cleaner. So... Uh, you can go down through here and look at all my port assignments. Um, you know, this shows where everything's connected. And let's just start kind of left to right. Um, now, the first thing you notice, I have external power in. So it's designed for like a 5 to 9 volt input. And you notice one doesn't go to ground. It goes to a net called switched ground. So this power net right here... Um, 
gets attached to the input jack. Now, this is a tip ring sleeve uh, type jack. So what happens is you can imagine uh, the, the, the uh, guitar jack coming in from the left here. The tip will set on this little uh, uh, terminal right here. And because there's a, a ring and a sleeve uh, set of contacts, you know, guitar is mono. It, it only has kind of like there is no ring and sleeve. It's all sleeve. So the sleeve will make the connection uh, between this here and this here. So these will get shorted together when the jack is plugged in. So then switched ground, this gets attached to ground. Um, so that's what enables external power. Now, so the signal, what I do here is I come in through a little network here. Now, I have some default values that work good for my Carvin. I have a Carvin Ultra V guitar that I have been testing with. I have a value of 10 ohms and 10K. Now, why 10 ohms and 10K? Well, I found out if I loaded it with 10K, uh, that provided a nice, uh, clean signal uh, for the input to the A to D converter and didn't overdrive it. Now, I didn't actually technically need 10 ohms. I could have shorted this. Um, but I use 10 ohms here because I have another 10 ohm somewhere else in the design, and I like to reuse uh, common values. Now, you may find for your guitar, if you have something with a really hot pickup, you may have to knock this down a little bit, uh, but maybe not. But you have some pads here uh, uh, to, to kind of play around with. So we have a signal here. Now, I have a coupling cap, C9, that goes into the left channel of this chip here. Now this chip is a 24-bit codec uh, uh, from Wolfson. Uh, Wolfson makes some nice simple to use codecs. Uh, so this is just an A to D converter, 24 bits, um, and you just have to AC couple in your signal. Um, now the right channel, I have this little jumper here, and what this jumper is, is a little solder jumper, you know, on the board. So let's take a look at it. All right, one thing I love about Altium Designer, I have this nice 3D view of my PCB. So uh, J7, you can see here, is just a little set of pads. If you just put some solder on your soldering iron, you can short rate across this. So what that does is essentially connects the left and right channel together. So you could sum them up if you wanted to actually actually filter out noise. You could sum up both channels. That will get rid of some internal data converter noise. But I also have the option that if you want to bring in a stereo signal from this here is just a uh, 3.5 millimeter stereo jack. Um, so that's kind of the input structure. Um, you notice there's not much anti-aliasing filter because it kind of exists uh, in, you know, in a 24-bit converter. Um, it filters out everything except images of whatever is at your sample rate. Um, and it turns out, you know, uh, that uh, you, you really don't need it. You could tack on like a little you know, 100 picofarad to ground here if you want to. You're going to find out it really doesn't matter, um, this application. Now, I have three solder pads, J11, 12, and 13. Um, and on my board here, let's flip this over here. That's 11, 12, and 13. And all those are, are uh, we have ground on one side, and I bring an I.O. through a resistor, to uh, some port pins, uh, ports C4, 9, and 0. That way you could either drive an LED, or if you wanted to, you could use uh, between this resistor and an internal pull-up you can enable on the pin, you could enable, uh, have a switch. See, you could kind of use these I.O. either way. And you have some uh, 1206 uh, solder pads for, um, you know, playing around with if you need a resistor. Now, I have some potentiometers, so... These are just 10K potentiometers, and you notice I just wire them up between 3.3 volt and ground. Uh, and I put a little a filter cap um, to really slow it down, filter out any noise that might be on the 3.3 volt line, because this comes from, the 3.3 comes from the K20 board. Um, and I go on three input channels. All right, so let's move on here. Now, the output of the codec feeds into an I squared S interface on the uh, K20. So the K20 has what's called an I squared S interface. It's a common audio interface. I'll let you do the research on I squared S. Um, it is simply a clock synchronous uh, data converter interface that we bring in data. So I have both an input and output um, I squared S interface. 
the output feeds into uh, a DAC, a 24-bit uh, Wolfson DAC. I, these are in their kind of lower-end series. The signal-to-noise ratio isn't quite as good, but um, they're low cost, and uh, they're certainly good enough for, for the guitar. Um, and I want to point out here that I do not power. I have a 3.3-volt rail that comes from the K20 board. I use that to power Logic. Uh, on this board, but not the, the data converters. The data converters actually on this 5 to 9 in, which either can come from the outside world or, you know, I feed it to the uh, K20 board. Um, you know, this will feed the uh, raw power from the K20 board. Um, uh, I feed the data converters from here because the reason uh, I do that is that. Uh, 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 you need a really clean supply for uh, the the data converters. You don't want to, their, their power supply rejection ratio isn't all that great. So you notice I have a little 10 ohm uh, and some uh, 0.1 to 4.7. This forms, I have a decoupling cap, and this forms like a little low-pass filter network uh, for the data converters. So the data converters get their own, uh, they get their own power. All right. Now. Let's move on here. All right, the output of the uh, D to A converter, I do a little low-pass filter. Uh, that removes a, a super high-frequency image from the sigma delta. Um, then it goes two places. One, it goes to the output guitar jack. Um, the other goes to an LM4808. This is a little uh, uh, headphone amplifier circuit. So... Um, I feed it to a this headphone amplifier. Uh, you can just look up the data sheet. Um, I wire it. It's for a gain of one. This is set up in an inverting configuration with a gain of one. You might need some headphones. I have a nice set of headphones at a gain of one. Uh, it was plenty loud. Um, I have some little 100 microfarad uh, capacitors for... Uh, uh, to remove the DC bias. These are these are uh, operated in a single supply uh, operating range. Um, and it just goes out to the jack. Now you'll notice, just like the data converters, I also feed uh, the plus 5 volts uh, uh, for the amplifier from its own regulator. And what this does is makes a really nice, uh, clean, you know, 5 volts for the audio amplifier. Because uh, what I found is this circuit here that biases the amplifiers, if you don't have a clean supply here and a big fat cap, it's very noisy. Whatever, if you power, when you're doing debugging, if you power the circuit from... You know, the USB, there's a lot of noise on a USB circuit, um, you know, coming from the PC. You don't want that bleeding through your headphones. It's, it sounds really bad. Um, so there we go. And uh, lastly, if you want to, I have pads for more external RAM. Now, I, I got to take a minute to explain how this works. This external RAM, um, you have... Uh, and let's just open up. I'm sorry, just give me a second here. This is a one megabit, so 128 kilobyte uh, uh, memory. Now these are normally spy interface, but these also have what's called a quad spy mode, where you can clock out data four bits at a time. So to kind of improve performance, what I did is I spread the four bit data. I have two chips, one to get the lower four bits and another one to get the upper four bits. Um, across port D, so you can clock out this data eight bits at a time. So it's almost like a parallel memory. So the first set of example code does not take use of this RAM, but in future versions I may, and you may want to write the code yourself, but is if you need a really long delay RAM, so if you want to implement delay, I put on the, these chips so you could uh, get some really long delays of several seconds if you wanted to. Now, the internal RAM we have is good enough for filters and comb filters, but not quite enough to if you want to get a uh, very long delay line. So uh, the quad spy here, you get um, quite a bit of RAM to get a few seconds of delay. All right, and that's it. Um, so other than that, uh, 
That's all you kind of uh, really need to know about the schematic. All of the code uh, is kind of already set up to use these I.O., but as you're building it, uh, the schematic will give you kind of a nice reference, you know, um, you know, of kind of what the parts do uh, in, in a way to hack at it. So that's all for uh, this video. Um, in the next video, we're going to take a look at kind of downloading the code and uh, kind of configuring, you know, the monkey jam code uh, so you can uh, play with it.